In chapter 7 of Acts, a Christian is martyred for the first time amid a hail of stones. What was it that got him killed? Well, he had a dangerous idea, a very dangerous idea. And he puts it like this. He says, God's temple is not built with human hands. His name was Stephen, and that got him killed. Of course, it didn't help that he said it in the temple to the very people who ran the temple. And it didn't help that he said it in a trial, in a way that didn't attempt to win friends and appeal to the jury. What Stephen said, how he said it, and where he said it, got him stoned to death by religious leaders, the first Christian to die for his faith. Stephen said, God's temple is not built by human hands. It doesn't seem that revolutionary. It doesn't even seem true on the face of it, because aren't all temples ultimately built by human hands? What's so wrong about a temple? What did Stephen see that got him killed? Something that he seemed to see as a Greek-speaking Jew, as opposed to the apostles who were Hebrew-speaking Jews, and they were a lot more positive toward the temple than Stephen was. What does he see in a temple that makes him speak against it so boldly? What's a temple doing for Stephen to lead us away from God rather than toward him? Well, think of it this way. If you wanted to send a letter to God in the first century AD, you would address it like this. God, Holy of Holies, Temple Mount, care of the high priest, Jerusalem, Palestine. That's where God was. That was God's address. And the whole religion revolves around making sure that you're pure enough to come close to God's address, to the Holy of Holies. The purer you were, the closer you got. If you stayed pure, God liked you. You could approach. But if you weren't pure, if you hung around with the wrong people, if you didn't wash your hands the right way, if you didn't say your prayers the correct way, if you didn't sacrifice the right animal, whatever, God wouldn't like you, God wouldn't hear you, God wouldn't save you. Being part of a purity religion is a terrifying business because Here's the problem. You never know whether you've been pure enough. Pure enough for God to actually like you. Jesus disagreed with this whole purity system. So much so that when he said the temple would be destroyed, <laughs> the priests arranged for him to be killed. A religion that's all about becoming pure to be saved has a very important benefit for those in charge of it. It's a great system for controlling people. When I was working in China, I learned about the controlling power of religion from a very powerful man, a provincial leader in fact, pretty much with the power of life and death over tens of millions of people. I got in to meet him one time at a banquet and it was arranged by house church leaders who said, you know, this is a special opportunity here. Give him the gospel. Nobody's more powerful in this province than he is. Well, it was coming up to Christmas, so I told him the story of the nativity. And he began to listen very closely. So, so well, in fact, that I thought he might be thinking of becoming a Christian. And then he said, well, thank you for telling me about this, this religion. He leaned back and he spoke to one of his aides and he says, how many Christians do we have in this province? He got a reply, and it seemed to surprise him. And he gave this guy another order, and the aide rose and left. And then he turned to me and he said, thank you again for telling me about this amazing religion. He said, I've just banned the celebration of the nativity in this province. I said, you've banned Christmas? He said, yes. I said, well, why? 
I said, well, isn't it obvious? The idea that God could be a child born to a no-name girl in a no-name village, if that were true, God could be anyone. And God could be everywhere. He said, I can't have that getting around. I can't manage that, he said. And I said, well, what do you mean you can't manage that? You can't tell me you think you can manage God. And he said, well, yes, of course. I said, well, well, how would you manage God? He said, it's simple. You keep him in the temple. You keep him in the temple. He said, look at every Chinese village. It's got a temple. A peasant goes into the temple and they light a stick and they put it in an orange or a uh, a lemon, and they ask for a bit of good luck from their ancestors. He said, no harm done. Stays in the temple. Not dangerous. Doesn't really get out. This idea that God doesn't stay in the temple, but could be working through anyone, at any time, everywhere. He said, oh, I can't manage that. It was like talking to Herod the Great or Caiaphas, the kind of men that put Stephen to death. And when he makes his great defense speech in the book of Acts, he's asking the question, well, where did our great ancestors in the faith meet God? Did they meet him in the temple? Where did Abraham meet God? When he was a sun worshiper in Iraq. Where did Joseph meet God? When he was a prisoner in Egypt. Where did Moses meet God? When he was a shepherd in the desert in Midian. None of them, none of the great ancestors of the faith actually met God in the temple. Aren't you making a bit too much of this? Well, they didn't like it. What is a temple made with human hands, as Stephen means it? Well, a temple, it's something we build ourselves to keep God in. And it's very subtle because we think we're building it to get to God, but actually, it's how we keep him away. It's how we keep him out. So we always have to look at our lives and ask, well, is there a temple we have constructed with our own hands to keep God in, to manage him, if you like? Might be a tradition, a building, a place, a doctrine, a book, an experience even. Something that keeps God in, something that tries to make God safe and predictable, something we do that makes sure he's always on our side. It takes a lot of energy to keep God in a box like that. And it's very dangerous, dangerous to us, I mean, because God doesn't stay there. God can't be managed. And it's crazy to think that he can, but there's something in us that, that attempts to. So a temple, according to Stephen, is the way we try to keep God at bay. And if we realize that's what we're doing, then actually God is, as it were, let out of the temple. But if you want your God safe and predictable and manageable, oh yes, build a temple for him. But if you want God to be who he really is, dangerous, just, sovereign, accepting, then we better dismantle that temple and live.